All right, so Proton ASP. Now, yet another Android 12 custom ROM that we are talking about. It's, you know, a regular stuff for me to try different custom ROMs and bring the reviews to you guys. I've installed it yesterday. I charged the phone completely, ran the benchmarks, and since then, I have been using this particular ROM. Now, there are things that we are adding to reviews one by one. For example, from today, we will be including unlimited Google storage available or not in any particular ROM. And slowly and steadily, you know, the ROM review system will keep improvising and you will get more information out of all this. If you think you like chatting with like-minded people, please join us on Telegram. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And last but not the least, if you think the hard work is worth the effort, well, please click on the join button and support the channel. Now, without further ado, hello, awesome people. Welcome to Phone Ops. My name is Kalash. Let's get going. Now, off lately, Proton USP has been getting a lot of attention, a lot of updates and stuff like that. Now, this is unofficial right now, but understand that the official tag for this particular device as of now is only available for Pixel devices. So it's really a good thing that we have a maintainer, we have a person who is actually, you know, porting stuff, improving stuff for Proton USP and we get to use this wonderful ROM. And you'll understand why I say this wonderful ROM in a minute, right? Now, let's look over here. We have Proton USP 12.2.0 unofficial. This is the maintainer, so thank you, buddy. Good job there. Device is the Poco X3 Pro. This ROM works on Vayu and Bhima both. The reason I'm saying this is because a lot of people keep asking me these questions. So yes, it is valid for Vayu and Bhima both. Android version we have over here, of course, is Android 12. The build date is the 7th of January, 2022. So this is a recent build that we are talking about. Bumped to 12.2.0, January security patch. So one of the first ROMs to get January security patch. Merge tag Android 12 R26, and this is the full change log. Now, as always, these full change logs are very, very long. So you can probably go to the link and read the change log yourself because it doesn't make any sense reading stuff. But let's talk about the device change log over here, which is not so long. We have upgrade power hall to 1.3 with optimized setup. Kang of SS, this is this. Remove IO red ahead. Trim Qualcomm, this is this. Remove hint for adaptive battery CPU throttling. Remove rate limit setup and full change log. Now this ROM is based on OSS vendor, includes G apps, firmware is 12.0, whatever you want to use. SE Linux status is enforcing, safety net should be passing out of the box and don't PM the dev, right? Now, the moment I installed this ROM and set it up after allowing it to settle down for like a couple of hours, the ROM has been performing really, really great. But this is another suggestion that I would give you guys. I am in a situation wherein, you know, I have to install a ROM, maybe use it for a day, 24 hours and give you the review. But if you want to check the complete potential of a ROM, I would suggest use it for two to three days. Let it have two to three battery charge cycles and then, you know, determine if this ROM is good or bad. If in the initial review, the reviews that I do are initial reviews because I can only use one ROM for a day. Still, I'm not able to cover all the ROMs. I'm saying that the battery life is decent, which means when you allow it to settle down, you will have better performance, better battery life when it settles down. Now, let's talk about the ROM as a whole over here. So first things first, as you can see, we have typical Android 12 stuff going on over here. Themed icons, Material U doing all the magic. You do have the assistant shortcuts at the bottom right and left hand corner as well. And if you press and hold, you get home settings, widgets, and wallpaper style. Now you do have a Google widget over here. If you swipe from the top to bottom, standard stuff, you do get Android 12 quick tiles with everything arranged as it is in Android 12. The edit menu, the power menu over here, and you also get the settings shortcut. Now to the left, if you swipe, you will see that you have Google feed, which once again is impressing me with extreme smoothness. Now, out of the box, this ROM comes with 60 hertz to 120 hertz as far as the refresh rate is concerned i've set it to 120 hertz always because i keep saying this this device the poco x3 pro comes with a 5000 milliamp hour battery and if you always run it on 120 hertz still it should be easily able to get you through a day so yes the google feed is there and it's working smooth as butter no problem whatsoever right now let's quickly have a look at the quick tiles or the notification tiles whatever you want to call it you have screen record over here which just has very few options you can record internal and external audio and i did get this question in the comment section as well that why do you test the screen recorder people barely use the screen recorder understand for people who have only this device for people who don't have a pc they want to stream they want to record their gameplay especially record their gameplay not even streaming they will be using the built-in screen recorder because without root it will allow you to use internal and external audio so it becomes very important now after the screen recorder is enabled the good thing is Android 12 ROMs for the Poco X3 Pro have stopped jittering. But what matters is 
when we actually go ahead and stop the recording, let's see here, it's being processed. So let's increase the volume real quick. Yes, so the audio is pretty clear and let's look at the screen recording quality now. Okay, right. So I'm pretty happy to say that the built-in screen recorder is doing a great job. It's not only recording the audio clearly, but it is also recording the screen very, very fluently. So there are no lags, no performance penalties of any sort going on over here. Now, apart from this, if you look, look at the multitasking menu over here, you have pretty standard Android 12 stuff going on. You have split screen, you have free form. That means you have floating windows as well. You have screenshot and select options over here, which are working fine. You do have the expanded screenshot option as well. That works absolutely fine. Now, apart from this, if we go to the edit menu of the quick tiles over here, you will see that you have a bunch of additional options along with the, you know, privacy, quick access tiles like ambient display, caffeine and all those things are present. Heads up is present as well. Compass reboot. So some customization in Proton USP is available and that is a good thing. The reboot menu doesn't give us access to the advanced menu. Probably you'll have to activate it from settings. So if you go to settings, you go to about phone and you go to the Android version 12, you will see that this is Proton AOSP version 12 with the January security patch. And it says exclusive for some reason. I don't know why. Kernel is the Shaldia kernel, which has been a decent performer and a decent battery backup kernel altogether. So a more round of universal kernel is what we are talking about. Now, home settings over here, you get the pixel launcher, which has options like add app icons to home screen, swipe to access the Google app, overview suggestions, search your phone. So there are some additional options over here as well. Very, very basic stuff, pixel launcher over here. And even the widgets that you see over here are your Android 12 widgets. So you won't have any issues with the widgets at all. Apart from this, you of course have wallpaper and style, which gives you access to different theming options. Let's increase the brightness a little bit here, right? And uh, if you go to change wallpaper, you do have come alive, which are Google's live wallpapers. Let's go ahead and see if it downloads and allows us to apply them or not. Okay, there you go. I actually like this particular wallpaper because when you lock the screen, so it looks great. The accent color keeps changing with Monet UI as well. And that's a good thing. Even if you go to Google search, you will see that, you know, Gboard and all the other things are following material you theming. So as far as themed icons, beta and the Mon Monet UI theming is concerned, this is doing a great job. No problem whatsoever. Now, what also matters over here is the camera situation. And I have been telling you in a lot of videos that I am coming up with a Gcam video, ANX camera video for you guys, so that if you use a custom ROM, you can actually go ahead and have a decent camera application, which will allow you to click some decent pictures as well. I have tried a couple of Gcams. Those videos should be out in a week's time because understand I'm testing stuff for the K20 Pro, the Mi 11X and the Poco X3 Pro. And individually each device will have a gcam video coming soon now you do get gcam go over here which in my books is always a good thing because it does allow you to you know click some decent pictures at least right so gcam go is present portrait mode and all the other things and something we didn't talk about is the app icon animations now see over here the app icon animations are pretty rock solid in the terms you know the animation is great the smoothness is there and the speed is there so no problem with the app icon animations as well now, if you go to settings over here in network and internet and all the other options, you do have standard Android 12 stuff going on. But the moment you go to battery, you will see that you not only have thermal profiles, you also have the 180 Hz touch sampling rate, which is a good thing. You know, for gamers, that is always a good thing. I have ran the benchmarks using the benchmark profile in thermal profiles. And if we talk about the battery percentage or the battery backup over here, as you can see over here, we've used the screen for one hour and six minutes and 19 hours back we removed it from charging and we are still at 84 percent so the standby drain is pretty good the screen on time is pretty rock solid the performance is there and we will also have a look at benchmark number and safety net right before we do that we'll actually talk about charging as well the charging speeds for me using the 33 watt charger has been pretty decent no problem whatsoever you do get around 27 or 28 watts of charging under sound you do have quite a lot of options so although you don't have a dedicated customization menu, you do have some customization in each and every setting. You do have direct sound enhancer with enable hi-fi present, clear speaker, 
haptic feedback sensitivity so you know these things are good this device doesn't really have a super powerful haptic motor like the Mi 11x or the iPhone for that matter but whatever it is if you have the option to control the haptic feedback it is always a good thing now moving on under display you do have lock screen settings where you will get prevent accidental wake up wake screen for notifications double tap to sleep on lock screen privacy settings over here and then you have dark theme, font size, night light, colors. I've selected boosted over here. You see minimum and maximum refresh rate. You have the option of show refresh rate over here, which is a good thing because sometimes on high refresh rate displays or high refresh rate devices, if you have an issue and you want to have a look at the screen refresh rate, you have to go to developer options, which you have to first enable and the hassle is there. Now you do have some additional display features over here like high brightness mode and content adaptive backlight control, which is a good thing. And these are working fine auto rotate screen show 4G icon. So some customization is present in the display section. Now, if you actually go to security, you will see that you have the fingerprint option and fingerprint scanner works absolutely okay, no problem. Unfortunately, you still don't have face unlock. Now you have location, safety and emergency and all the other standard stuff. But if you go to system, under gestures, you have system navigation, one handed mode and swipe to screenshot as you can see. And that is working absolutely fine. You have prevent ringing and enable advanced restart. I did state that you have to actually go ahead and enable it from settings. So you can see over here, advanced restart has been enabled and playback control and volume wake and these options are present. Now that's everything about settings, but there is one feature over here called status bar tuner, which allows you to add and remove some settings or some options from the status bar. And then you have the battery percentage option and you have the time option. So as I said, you know, Proton USB is a super smooth ROM. It gives you decent battery life. Now let's have a look at safety net and the performance numbers. Now the safety net passes by default on this particular ROM. So that's a good thing. Play Store certification is present. So you will not have problems with your banking application. Wideband L1 is present in DRM info and that's always a good thing. That means you can consume Netflix and Amazon Prime in HD. Right now, let's go ahead and talk about Google Photos over here. If you go to library, you go to settings over here, you will see that backing up from this pixel is free and unlimited. So you do have unlimited storage on Google Photos, which is a good thing. And let's quickly go to screenshots over here. Now, as you can see, the CPU throttled to 88% of its max performance and the average score was 187 539 GIPS. Now, this is not the highest when it comes to the POCO X3 Pro, but this is a pretty decent score and it should give you decent performance. Now, if we also talk about Antutu benchmark over here, which I did run, 561 686. This is the middle ground. This is not too high, not too low, and it should give you good performance. And let's talk about the Geekbench numbers here real quick. 776 single core 2703 multi core. So, Shaldia kernel is doing a great job. Now, other things like Wi Fi calling, making calls, sending and receiving texts, internet connectivity, internet speeds, those features are a given that they are working fine. Otherwise, I would not be reviewing that any particular ROM because a phone should work as a phone first and then it can work as a multimedia device. So, in most of my reviews, when I don't consider these things or don't mention these things, which means that they are probably working fine. I've tested them and that is the reason it's not mentioned in the video. So all in all, this particular ROM Proton USB is rock solid, super fast, no random reboots, no issues whatsoever. Monitor is working great and the ROM is absolutely ready for a daily driver, although it is unofficial. Let me know in the comment section, what do you think about Proton USB? Until the next one, this is Kalash signing off at PhoneOps. Keep smiling, take care, goodbye.